of the weekly draws. It's the end of the summer holidays now. And we're going to be doing one of my all time favourite films, Mary Poppins, as Mary floats away off into the distance above the rooftops of London. So I'm really, really excited about this um, and I really think that you're going to enjoy it. So let's start with our basic shapes and we've got some beautiful painting today as well. Let's get drawing. <laughs> So we are going to start this, our very last one in this daily draw, weekly draw series of videos by finding the middle point of the page. So go halfway up, we'll put a little dot there and you're going to be halfway across as well. So it's about there. And then I want you to go down and go to about a quarter. Now from there, from that quarter line, what I'd like you to do is just go down a little bit and then very lightly, I want you to put a line in there. And what we're going to do from that line, we're going to use this line to draw in the first shapes. So we're going to come across here like that and down, across. I'm keeping my pencil marks so light. Look how, where I'm holding the pencil. Super light here. Coming down. And all I'm doing is this little series of shapes. Now, you don't have to, this isn't an architectural drawing. What we're doing is we're just going to give the impression of a skyline. So don't worry if it's not exactly the same as this. Just as long as we get the impression of a skyline. And we're going to come back at the next stage and turn these basic shapes into, we're going to add chimneys. We're going to just really turn them into that kind of Mary Poppins-like skyline. So I'm just coming in, putting these different shapes like that. Now, if this is your first draw with the Little Art School, what I'll do is, in a minute, when I get to the end of this first stage, you can pause it and put your own drawing in. And what you can see is that I'm doing this on watercolour paper. And this A4 watercolour paper, which you can, it's available in our online shop, means that I'll be able to put in some lovely heavy washes with watercolour. It's really important to get the paper right, probably more important than anything when you're doing watercolour. So that's my first set of shapes there. Now I'm going to go back to that mark I did at the beginning. I'm going to go above it, about a centimetre, and I'm going to put in a triangle. This is going to form the very basic shape for Mary Poppins. So it's just a triangle like that. And from that triangle, I'm going to put another triangle in. This is all really light, but the triangle's not exactly in the middle. I want you to come slightly to the left with this one here. And then on top of that, we've got a very lightly drawn oval. And that is our first set of shapes. So if you're looking here now at the finished painting, thinking that looks nothing like this, we're just getting, starting off, getting everything in the right place, getting the basic shapes in. But now in this section here, what I want us to really work on is Mary Poppins. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start here at the top of this triangle there, and we're gonna turn this into Mary's head. So what I'm gonna do is she's got this hat on is I'm going to use that circle as a guideline. But I'm going to draw these shapes in around it. So when you pause, you'll be able to see this, see how I'm doing this, how I'm just thinking about where that is and then adding these tiny little shapes. So we've got a little nose. I'm going to come in there like that and add a tiny little chin. So coming down here, then that I'm going to add to the neck. But I'm going to leave that triangle there like that. So coming on here, working from the triangle there, I'm going to take an arm up so that it's just simply I'm starting with that shape there. And from that shape, I've got another shape to help me make up the arm. And then the umbrella that she's holding has this fabulous handle which is a bird. 
So we've got those two shapes there and then the stick coming up. So already you can see we're starting to get a bit more Mary Poppins. Let's go to the other side here and we're going to put in two shapes like that, which will form this arm coming down and then she's carrying her very distinctive Mary Poppins carpet bag. So another shape there, a little shape for the cuff square and then a circle which we will eventually just this will become the hand and then the bag shape it's just coming in like that we've got that little shape coming down let's go across at the bottom square it up don't think about drawing a bag or even Mary Poppins bag what I want you to think about is the shape and that's that there. Right, let's start putting in the shapes that are gonna form the dress now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave a small space there and then I'm gonna come out there like that and put in that shape. And the same on this side, it's not, it's not symmetrical, but we've got that there like that. Then we've got these, it's like two balloons that I want you to put in to try to get this shape. It's not triangular, it's very curved. So we're gonna go in there like that Coming down, we're going to go there, like that. Now this bit here, I want you to bring it round here. I'm going to put in another shape, another shape there. Then this one, it's like that, in, out. We've just got two more shapes to add now. We've got this one here coming up and a little joining shape there. And that's it. So if you pause now and pop in those shapes. Right, I'm gonna start now by just, I'm gonna looking here, I've not left quite enough room. So I'm gonna take this first one if you've got plenty of room, don't worry. If you followed more of what was on the guide than what I was doing, don't worry. But all I'm going to do is just take that one down so it's a little bit lower. That's going to give me room to get her feet in. Right, up right to the top now. And I'm going to pop in the magic umbrella here. So we've just got the two. That one's a slightly higher up there. And it isn't a simple big curve actually it's more of a sort of curve come down up a little bit and then down and out like that and don't forget you want to take it from there make sure you've got the point coming there like that so coming down where we've just got this shape here I just want all I'm because all of this can you see here we're not painting any of it in it's a silhouette so you can just add that little thumb there and make it so that the coat joins. And I just want, with all these lines, we're just smoothing out and we're rubbing out. So if I rub that bit out there, then I've got the smooth line of her coat arm. And here on the shoulders, if we bring it up, and then I'm gonna go like that, just slightly. So what was just that very sharp triangle line, we're gonna alter that a little bit. And the same on the other side here, curve it round slightly. Didn't really need to worry about rubbing all the lines out in between because we are actually going to um, just be painting this black. But I'm going to rub them to help you there. Now if you feel like the nose isn't big enough, just have a little play with this bit until you're sure you've got it right. I've actually made her chin too big there. She's got a little chin that comes out. And this neck is very short there. And here, I'm just going to take it out slightly. It's worth taking your time over this bit here because you really want to feel like you've got that right. Think about the negative shape, the shape within the shape there. One of the problems, quite often you'll be thinking it's the nose and it won't. It could be something else. For me, it's the hat. I'm going to bring that line down there like that. And I'm happier with that now. Right, coming in here. Same with the arm here, we've got that. Just smooth it out, lots of rubbing out. Smoothing the arm out. I'm 
we've got that edge in our hand and here we want to put in the bag handle and I'm going to put in a line there as well. Coming down there, you'll see why I'm doing this now. I've got a line here and space for three buttons coming in. And if I rub these two lines there, that just becomes then the coat. So where the coat here and it kind of flicks up into a slight flick there and down and the same at the other side. So we've got her waist coming in and then coming out there like that and then flicking up. So I'm going to take that little shape out there. I'm going to keep that line, keep this because that will be one colour. I'll just get rid of that little line there. And what we've got coming down from the coat is more like that. And then the skirt coming out, we've really already got that line there. So now we just need to put in the boots. And just when you pause, have a little look at the boot shape. And we've talked about this so much now. I want you to think about the shape within the shape. So think about that shape there. So I'm going to go in, out, in. Take your time with this. It's the summer holidays. We've all got plenty of time. I really love Mary Poppins boots. There we go. So we've got the two boot shapes in. I'll just get rid of those rubbings out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change what we've got here with this basic skyline. Mary Poppins is finished now. Basic skyline here, adding in a second layer so that we've got these two layers here. Now here, when you pause, this is what you're going to see. So you're going to see these shapes. So how we've gone in here and changed it. I'm not going to now sit and do all this. I will just show you what I've done. So where we've got that line there, that is actually here and up to there. So all, And it really does not have to be accurate. You can have some fun and really play with this. But what you're doing really is changing just these simple lines and changing it as if it's church spires like that got that little church spire in. Um, chimneys, loads of chimneys. I mean, that's what I think of when I think of Mary Poppins floating off through the sky because this is the London skyline. So that's what we're really working on here. But it really doesn't have to be exactly the same. So you can see I'm gonna go down here and turn that, take that up. So working across these, just changing them into little bits of chimneys, adding some chimney pots, etc., and then come down again. So that is there, that's about there, that line. So from there, just start off, go down and take the chimneys up. Have some fun making some funny shapes. Definitely church spires though. Church spires, chimneys, pots, plain chim old chimney pots like that and ones with the chimney pots in. And think about the negative shapes all the time. Think about the shape within the shape as you're doing these things. There's another chimney, and this one's got chim these tall chimney pots with it. And coming down. So I'm gonna finish that just on my own now, all the way along. That's what you want. These shapes here, don't worry about those. Don't put those in. We're gonna come on to that at the next stage and you'll see what we're doing here with those. So those little light shades, don't put those in. Just get in the spires and the chimney tops. <laughs> bit of wax resist. You know I said about the windows on here on these bits. Well I want to put those in with using the wax so I'm just going to put in here and there a few little tiny dots and shapes for windows so that when we come to it they'll show up. I know it's impossible for you to see this because I'm using a white crayon. I had thought about using a yellow one I possibly should have done but it is just, you can see them on here. This is all I'm putting in now. And I'm pressing really hard so that the wax pushes the paint away. 
And then coming down here, I want that line in wax and I want the buttons. One, two, three. Now, only two really showed up there because I obviously didn't press hard enough on the first. And then before I start putting my washes in, it's impossible to rub out once the wash is in. So you need to make sure you've done out any rubbings out and got rid of all this, all the rubbings out bits before you start. Right, now I'm going to go with this glorious background wash here. So here's my paints and the key is that I get the colours right before I start. So I'm going to make on the lid of my palette here three really big washes and they're very light washes. So to make a light wash like this, what I'm going to do is use lots of water and only a little bit of paint. And the best way to do this is to make sure you're using your tester sheet. So here I'm going to start with a yellow. Let's have a look. Yeah, I think that's about right. I really do want these pale, so I'm not going for much paint at all. And I'm going to go for a red. That's a bit too orangey for me. So I'm going to go in here like that. Let's have a look. That will do. There we go with a bit more red. Yeah, that's it. And then to the blue. And for this, I'm going to barely put my brush in because I want it really light. I'm going to go with that blue there. It's kind of a purpley blue, really. Okay, so that is what I'm looking for. So as I go down, these are going to run into each other. I might add a touch of this blue as well. That's more what I'm looking for. Now I'm going to go over the whole thing and this is called a graded, a, gra a graded wash. I'm going to start at the top and then move down. So that's one way. I could start with the blue, go into the red, go into the yellow. Because I want to make sure that the yellow, which is the weakest colour, gets its present help, I'm going to first of all turn it upside down and I'm going to hold it at a slight angle. You could put something underneath this to do that. I haven't really done this before on the daily or the weekly draws. So Elizabeth, can you see it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm just holding it up slightly. I'm going to start at the top with my yellow and you need to make sure you've got plenty here because I want to take the yellow to about there. So making sure that I get the whole thing. You can see I'm not being particularly careful here, but it is the wax resist will already start. Look at that. I thought I'd done tons and I haven't. Enough. So I'm going to take the yellow up to about there, probably. So we've got that yellow bit at the bottom. Right, now I'm going to leave a small gap and I'm going to go in with my red. But as I get to there, I keep turning the page. And what I want it to do is not be a line. I want it to kind of drop into each other. So I'll turn it around now. There we go. And I'm going to hold the page so that the colours drop in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the top here. Lots of water. This is all about the watercolour. I'm going to take the blue, drop it in. And I want it to run into the red here. And the way I do that, can you see how it'll run? I might put a little bit of water in there to help that run as well. You see it'll run up and down a little bit like that now i'm going to leave that to dry so we now this is completely dry i actually blasted it with the hair dryer because i'm quite impatient now when we did this as a holiday club initially we used gouache to get the very strong colors for mary but i'm not expecting everyone at home to have gouache so i'm just going to go straight into the palette so usually you see me constantly mixing washes and i'm not i'm just going to put my brush in into the red there and I am just going to paint it on with the paintbrush and I'm going to start I'm doing this so that these different layers will be dry so I'm going to start with the red here to make sure that I don't carry paint across on my um, wrist which I've done plenty of times you need to make sure that your brush is damp I'm just going to move that down so damp but not wet really is what we're looking for I've got another bit of red here. And we've got a little bit here on her hat. There, like that. So that's all for the red. And we've got a little bit of green as well. We'll put that in while we're 
doing this bit and this is here for the bottom of the umbrellas again just go straight into your palette there for that and put that bit of green on right now let's mix another wash here we're going to do this wash here that's at the bottom so what i want i'll use my big brush so i can get plenty of water on my palette there do not want to run out of this and i'm going to use this pale blue here now let's see is that too dark oh it's far too dark so let's go with plenty more water so the water will really lighten it up yes that's better can you see the difference between those two okay so coming across now i'm just going to put in this first layer and when I was practicing this, what I found was easiest was to just do it. Can you see how the wax resist is coming up? You can actually just take that down to the bottom if you find it easier. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around each of these things. And I'm going to do it going from one side to the next. So I'll do the whole thing. So I don't want it to dry and then to get a line. Now, that's all I'm going to do is to go down here like that. I might put a little... In there. And this is going to give us this top row of the um, landscape. I'm going to pause it here and put that in so you don't have to sit for 10 minutes watching me painstakingly go around all of these. Okay, so that's dry now. I've just done that with my hairdryer again to make it fast. And now I'm going to go in and I'm going to go straight into this blue here. And I'm going to paint just like I did with the red because that's nice and dry now. I'm going to paint in this bit here. You need to make sure that the red's dry because you really want to keep those clear lines between them. Two more bits of blue I've got here. I've got one line there in the umbrella and I've got one line here in the bag. So I'm going to leave that to dry whilst we come to do this bottom bit here. Now here on my palette, I've still got that blue from the top bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my purple and I'm going to add it into the blue so that we get this really nice dark purpley colour. Perfect. And then exactly what we did before, I'm going to go and I'm going to do each of these pretty easy now because the blue's already in. I'm going to take it down and again I'm going to get Elizabeth to pause filming here so that you don't have to sit there while I'm doing this whole thing but you can see when I take it down the wax resist makes those um, windows come up really nicely in that and I'm just going to take it all the way along and again we've got look we've got more there. Okay. So this is all completely dry now. I just blasted it with the hairdryer and we're going to finish it now with black. And what I'm going to do is use a small brush here. I'm going to go straight into the black. You can really see the difference between using the paints diluted as watercolours and then the contrast of that when you use it straight from the palette. Now here, all I'm going to do is to need a little bit more paint water in the brush here. And I'm going to go around all this. Now I have to say, we this is the 143rd free online art class that we have done since the start of March at the uh, or March the 23rd, I think was the first one, the start of um, lockdown here in Scotland and. Um, so 143 videos, six of them have been the weekly draws and 137 were the daily draws that we did. Um, and of them all, I wanted to finish on Mary Poppins because I'm a massive Mary Poppins fan. I'm um, huge. It was the, when I was little, it was the only, um, it was the only record I had. This was um, the Mary Poppins album. So I do know the off by heart every single song, which uh, to Elizabeth's great delight, I haven't so <laughs> it's not over yet Elizabeth there's still there's still a few minutes to go before we finish all I'm doing here is I'm just painting the whole thing using this black that's all we're doing now to finish it off and I'm going quite quickly I would highly recommend you taking your time 
over this bit because the more time you take, the more carefully you can do it. I'm just going round and then I'm going to be super careful with the face though because I really don't want to ruin this bit. Um, getting that little chin there, and that, the way she holds her head. So it's been really nice finishing off, off on it. I was a bit nervous because it's not a particularly easy painting. I think the way that we've broken it down really makes it so that anybody could do this. I really hope that you've enjoyed it and make sure, because especially because it's the last one, that you share your um, pictures with us of this, this fabulous Mary Poppins. And you can see here, I'm just going to go over. I don't have to worry about that. We'll go around and we'll do the little bag her hand holding the bag and a little handle and coming round. so elizabeth never gets to speak on these things but as it's the very last one elizabeth which one was your favorite i loved the beauty and the beast ones. she did love the beauty and the beast ones and that's because elizabeth had actually done those you inspired me to do those and you because you'd actually elizabeth had done those herself and I thought oh that would be a brilliant daily draw so I'd done them a few years ago a few years ago it was like I was quite young she was quite young Alice was actually very sophisticated 18 now so um but they were super and I really liked them so I stole it and I loved seeing everyone's comments oh yeah as soon as I saw them they just made me so happy yeah. yeah they did the comments kept us going really because um it's been a lot easier when we've just been doing them as weeklies, but when we were doing two a day throughout lockdown, uh, we were getting quite tired and then we'd see the comments and it was just a total it make joy. It, worth it. it totally made it worth it when we saw everybody doing it, you know, and the uh, massive variation of ranges from, you know, um, five-year-old uh, Isabel Herbert, who, who sent us her pictures and we loved them, through to sort of seven, eight, nine, ten year olds and teens and beyond to grandparents with Nana and Papa Gibson who kept us going every day. And that is the final one and it's Mary Poppins. <laughs>hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. It's been such a joy for me to finish on this one. So it's almost five months, can you believe it? Almost five months since we started here in my dining room doing the first little frog. And since then, we have had thousands of children all over the world joining us to do these art lessons. Not just children, we've had plenty of adults too. So what happens now? We've got, we're gonna leave most of the, of the art lessons on YouTube so you can go back and have a look at them on the archive. We're also gonna be publishing books of the design so you'll be able to buy the books um, and, and do them at home, do some things at home. We'll be, we'll, we'll, we'll be coming back, we'll be doing these different things again, but the key really with the Little Art School is that we're all about what happens in our studio with children. We really believe that for you to to really blossom and grow as artists, that we want our teachers to be helping you to see how really brilliant you are and how much progress you're making. So if you'd like to attend one of our classes at the Little Art School, all your, all your family need to do is to book a free taster and you can come into one of our studios and see if you like it. That's if you live on the west coast of Scotland. For anybody around the different parts of the UK, and we know we've had people up and down the UK doing the courses, well, you can, um, we will be selling franchises in um, all over the United Kingdom over the next, we're just about to launch it, to launch our franchise model. So keep, make sure you keep checking in on the Little Art School and fingers crossed, there could be one in your area soon. And for adults who have loved joining in and taking part, and there's so many of them that Elizabeth and I have loved seeing your pictures, um, we are actually going to be launching our online drawing and painting course for adults when we've launched it. So you can check in and find out more about that. So five months, it's been a total joy. Elizabeth and I feel like we've made friends with so many people and we've loved seeing your pictures. It's been, I feel quite emotional. It's been an absolute joy and a massive thank you to my daughter, Elizabeth, who's about to go off to university at Edinburgh. 
um, in the next uh, few weeks, but I've had five months of going to work with my beautiful girl every single day and it's been a joy. So thank you to everybody who's done the daily draws and the weekly draws. We have loved drawing with you. It's been a really tumultuous period for, for, for all of us doing the unexpected, but I hope that you've really fallen in love with drawing and I hope that your story with the Little Art School is just beginning. We will see you soon. Thank you.